A drag to me is a letter to my younger self, telling myself that even though I may not be like the other boys, one day I can celebrate that part of myself. And other people will love you for being different and you don't have to be so ashamed anymore. Hi, I'm Opera Tang. And I am a drag queen. Opera Tang is extension of myself. She is myself in a different form. It's just me going getting into character to display another facet of myself to the world, which I think I've held back for very long. Drag to me is gender performance, or whatever gender means to you. Drag transcends your gender identity, your sexual orientation, your biological sex, whatever. Performing or showing the world what is on your inside that may not conform to the heteronormativity or what society wants. It's celebrating yourself, it's celebrating life, it's celebrating anything that you want to. It's, it's an art form. Go. Growing up, I had family members calling me derogatory words like aqua. I've always been that feminine sissy boy. I come now to own that word, to own that feminine energy. Opera Tang is two things. Firstly, it's for telling my younger self to embrace my heritage and my culture. And secondly, back in the day, generally speaking, women weren't allowed uh, an education so they couldn't read or write. And in theatre, musical theatre, plays, opera, they couldn't read or write the scripts. So males had to perform those roles, like in Shakespearean theatre, in Chinese opera, in Japanese kabuki theatre. And surprisingly, many of these male characters who cross-dressed or portrayed these female identities were so much more of a celebrity, they were more famous than their male counterpart. My grandmother and her, her mother, who loved Wayang, which is Chinese opera, and that's why I wanted to maybe pay homage to that as well in my drag. Grandma has loved me unconditionally. She has taught me how to sew. She has taught me being myself is okay. The people I love, whether it's a boy or girl, whatever in between, she'll still cook a meal for them if I bring them home. And she has supported me in ways that was non-judgmental. <laughs> There are lots of ways that I conceptualize a drag look. Uh, growing up in Singapore, uh, there's a lot of like cultural mixing and interculturalness, and I think that's something that should be celebrated. So, and I want to show that through my drag. The first one was pink, and I love very monochromatic looks. The next look was for Christmas, you know, because I grew up uh, credo Catholic. It is still an important part of myself. So I wanted to infuse like a Santorina thing with Chinese opera because they had lots of colour palette overlaps. The third look that I did was for Mid-Autumn Festival. The most iconic thing about them besides moon cakes is Chang'e, which is this beautiful goddess that flew through the moon. My great, great grandmother was a Samsung woman. And I thought of doing the Samsung woman because she's so iconic with her red headscarf and is almost exclusive to the Singapore or the Malayan region. What's next for Opera Tang? There is so much that Opera Tang can do. First thing actually is to get to know the drag community in Singapore even better. Do competitions. I think collaborations with other drag queens, like concept projects, uh, videos, maybe music videos. Collaborating with uh, more of the Chinese cultural enthusiasts in Singapore, maybe. Opera has a path in LGBTQ advocacy. Even in the past year, during this pandemic, we have seen in Singapore cases of discrimination and hate against LGBTQ. I think being a drag queen in and of itself it attracts attention. I would want to use that as a platform to advocate for LGBTQ rights.